think it's gonna work? There's only one way to find out. Well, you better find out fast. My sensors indicate he just arrived. All right, I'm going in. Before you do, if I could give you one piece of advice. Yeah? Don't go easy on him. Hey, thanks for coming in. Have a seat right there. To be honest, I'm a little surprised you agreed to this. So this is against all legal advice that I've gone. The last thing I posted was a script. Uh, it was actually made for me by lawyers. I've been having to bite my tongue for this whole month while we collect all the evidence. And that's, that's what's messed me up the most, man, not being able to come out and just talk. Well, we appreciate you coming in and finally talking, but you know, Kate, we've already done the investigation. We already have all the evidence. That's what these boxes are here for. So we know what you did. You know, you're this crypto mastermind. You've got multiple wallets, hundreds of tokens. We've got them all, Kay. I am no crypto mastermind, all right? I'm literally a content creator and I trusted the wrong people and it's led to this disaster that I'm in. And I really want to apologize about being led by somebody that I should not have trusted so much. I should have invested more of my time into really understanding what went on instead of relying on others. And for this, I hold my hands up. That's absolute bull You can't just scapegoat Sam Pepper. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, he, he's a bad dude, but let's be honest, you're looking pretty bad here too, buddy. You were the ambassador of a kid's charity coin and sold within 24 hours. It was the actions of one individual that caused the entire project to not be able to sustain itself, which was the original plan. Not this again. Kay, we're going in circles, buddy. Look, let's take a quick break. I'm gonna go grab a cup of coffee. Don't you go anywhere, okay? I'll be right back. He's not confessing, even after everything. He just keeps saying, it's Sam. What do I do? Well, I ran a few simulations, and I really think you should try something else. You know I don't believe in treating the witness as hostile. No, not that. So far, you've been leading the conversation. Try having him start from the beginning and see if you can catch him in a lie. It'll make it harder for him to backtrack. All right, Kay, we're gonna try something different. I'm gonna actually try to give you a chance here. Do you have any actual evidence for what you're saying here? Everything I'm about to say has been investigated and looked at by numerous blockchain detectives. Oh, blockchain detectives, huh? Yeah, my partner told me you sent in some evidence of you confronting Sam Pepper or something. Yeah, we'll, we'll play it right here on the screen. We can see his wallets where he's literally got hundreds of thousands of dollars. He must be hiding something to lie to me about this and then show me your wallets. But right now, all the proof I have is that you made a f ton of money, Sam. No, I didn't. I Bro, didn't. Sam, then help help me help you then, all right? Help me help you. But right now, it looks like you made a f ton of money, bro. And you lied to me and said you didn't. And that's what's hurting me the most. What hurts me the most is that you lied, bro. I'm telling you I didn't make a f ton of money, Kay. All right. I'm gonna pause it right there. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, Kay. There's a there's a problem with the evidence you're showing here. That wallet you're showing on screen right now that has all this money that Sam Pepper supposedly made, it doesn't belong to Sam Pepper. I personally traced it down. It belongs to somebody named Boink Boink. I actually called Boink Boink to confirm this. Okay, uh, is, is this Boink Boink .eth? Yeah, that's me. Hey, you're not Sam Pepper, are you? Nope. You have nope. nothing to do with Sam Pepper. Nope. CK, not only were you wrong about Sam Pepper owning this wallet you put on screen and said had $170,000. All the proof I have is that you made a f ton of money, Sam. You also slandered someone else's reputation in this ridiculous quest to be completely innocent. I mean, what do you have to say for yourself, man? Everything I'm about to say has been investigated and looked at by numerous blockchain detectives. Kay, you've already said that. And look, I hate to ask this, but are these blockchain detectives in the room with us right now, Kay? The blockchain detectives that I hired over the past few weeks have found reasonable evidence that suggests that many of these wallets connect back to Sam himself. Wait, 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 slow down now, okay? You're changing the subject on me. We can go there, but uh, to be clear, now you're talking about the pre-sale list Sam had. You're saying those wallets are secretly his. What evidence do you have for that? And the biggest concern and what we've really found out and what led us down a deeper rabbit hole was that if you type in all of these Twitter names on the left, half of them are fake, not even real accounts. Who even knows if these accounts ever existed? So the people that Sam are trying to verify are real people putting money into the pre-sale are in fact 
fake people that don't exist. Currently, it's looking extremely likely that these wallets were owned by one single person. So that means that one individual owned 12.24% of the total supply, which is obviously insane. Okay, let me just stop you there, bud. Not only do these people exist, but you were wrong about the most basic piece of information. A lot of those names aren't Twitter handles at all. They're Telegram handles. Like this Pronos333, the example you gave here, bud, he 100% exists. He called himself the wordsmith of the Wild West, as we can see from an archive. Or take another guy from this pre-sale list, which is all controlled by Pepper. He simply went by Jamie when I reached out and interviewed him. But one of the things Kay said is that you guys in the pre-sale list didn't exist and that you guys secretly were controlled by Sam Pepper's. Like Sam Pepper, y'all were fake accounts and Sam Pepper controlled everything. But that's not true, is it? No, no, not not at all. A lot of us actually lost a lot of money on Save the Kids. Like me personally, I lost 6 BNB as well. So Kate, your whole theory about Sam Pepper secretly controlling 12% of the coins and all these accounts being fake, it's just more incorrect information. I mean, for all this so-called self-investigation you've done, you've uncovered nothing but a bunch of false information, which you used to paint yourself as innocent and Sam Pepper as this evil villain. But does it ever occur to you that maybe you're in the wrong here? Look, just try saying sorry to the people you affected. I am genuinely so sorry that any of this ever happened. It was never my intention. And if I could take it back, I would instantly in a heartbeat. Good. Good, actually, hey, that's a start. You know, just leave it there. Don't make any more excuses. Even though I was tricked by somebody that took advantage of me and my fan base. <sighs> All right, look, that's it. This is over. <laughs> if you're gonna lie, you're gonna deflect blame. Okay, let's see where that gets you, right? Look, you just hang tight. Someone will come get you. But for now, this interview's over. That's it, we're wrapping up here. I may be wrong here, but I detect frustration in your tone. <laughs> you know what? A little bit. I just thought after collecting this much evidence, catching K in this many lies, I thought he would come clean. Why would he with a fan base of literal children? I assess he has a 68.2% chance of escaping this at its current course. And that's calculating if law enforcement doesn't intervene. So what do I do? I feel like I've shown people everything. Well, confessions are nice, but the next best thing is an airtight case. You've demonstrated several flaws in K's defense, but perhaps there's more evidence to be found. Will facts even matter at this point? I'm tired of this. I know, but your work is far from over. You've got to finish what you started. As I went back to the studio, I dreaded the long night ahead. But somewhere late at night, buried in the blockchain, I found something that made it all worth it. Okay, you got it. Ladies and gentlemen, with the with the sun pouring in through the windows here, I've been up all night researching the so-called response of Fraser K, and I'm ready to debunk it. So far, I've already demonstrated that K's so-called blockchain detectives are about as reliable as Dream's Harvard astrophysicist, and that the conspiracy theory of Sam Pepper controlling the presale list is false. But I want to say here, I'm not defending Sam Pepper by any means. Sam Pepper was a key player in Save the Kids, the scam, but so was Fraser K. And with his ridiculous self-investigation where he found himself innocent, K muddied the water by throwing a bunch of accusations against Sam, many of which are not true. So I had to clear those up, but now let's move to Fraser K himself. If you watched my last video on Save the Kids, all our reporting ends up standing up pretty strong. Kay started the coin, Sam Pepper changed the Yante Whale Code, and both of them have an incredibly shady and long history in cryptocurrency. But Kay is now denying a lot of this accountability in a new response video that he put out. He's been basically saying he doesn't understand how crypto works. He said it multiple times. I am no crypto mastermind, all right? I'm literally a content creator and I have no technical background or knowledge. This is easily debunkable, not only because Kay then reveals four wallets of his, but we also know that in these wallets are hundreds of different types of cryptocurrencies. Take for instance, his main wallet, which has over a hundred unique types. And I'm just gonna say this right now. If someone owns a hundred of anything, you're not gonna believe them when they say they have no knowledge of that thing. Kate knew what he was doing and pretending to be a dumb influencer isn't gonna work. Now, another thing I wanna address is Kate pretending that he was somehow a victim 
of Sam Pepper. He makes a lot of noise about the supposed money he lost on Save the Kids, which he tallies up to be $37,000. But I'm gonna exactly break down to you how I lost $37,000 on Save the Kids. Now, as I said, it doesn't really matter if he lost money on this scam. The problem is you dumped the coin and that you made six figures on other cryptocurrencies. But even this $37,000 he lost, I'm not sure he actually did. See, one of the biggest costs he mentions is a $55,000 listing on an app called PooCoin. Two hours after Save the Kids was launched, I sent $55,000 of my own money, and this was for one single purpose. If you're familiar with crypto, this website is a place where you go to check out all of the, the tokens, the graphs, everything like that. And that is exactly what the $55,000 was for. Now, this is crazy. This sounds like a lot of money. But what Kay doesn't tell you is that technically, he could take back that money anytime. To understand why, let me explain how this works. Save the Kids got on something called the vetted list for PooCoin. Now to do that, you have to be a top 10 contributor to their liquidity pool. Once you are, you will show up on a top 10 vetted list. But here's the thing about this list. You can take your money back out of these pools at any time. Something that I confirmed with the PooCoin promotional team. And they said that they decided to block Save the Kids from the list after everything went down. Quote, when tokens are blocked, they can then withdraw their PooCoin LP at any time, which they should do because there's no longer any benefit in keeping it there. So right there, ladies and gentlemen, in black and white, this payment that Fraser made can be taken back out. And speaking of that block, sure enough, I noticed that the number six spot is blocked right now on PooCoin. So I asked the team, is that Save the Kids? They responded, yes, number six is a blocked entry for Save the Kids. Now, what's great about this is we can still see how much money is still in there. $41,195.84. I asked the listing company how much money could be withdrawn from here after fees. He starts by saying, if the 42K is withdrawn, it will turn into 21K in BNB and 21K in PooCoin. And then after some calculation, he says, so in total, they will get back $37,228, which coincidentally is about the amount he said that he lost. How I lost $37,000 on Save the Kids. But there's actually more here I discovered as well, because after Kay confessed which wallets he owned, I went back and checked. And this wallet right here, it was the largest owner of Save the Kids tokens at launch. Let me repeat that. The person with the largest single Save the Kids token balance at launch was none other than Fraser K. And of course, we know what he did with these tokens. He sold. So just imagine for a second, you're an ambassador of a coin. You created it. You have the largest balance and then you sell almost immediately. And then when you get caught, you blame it on Sam Pepper, a guy who worked for you. And you say, oh no, I didn't know anything about crypto. But it gets even worse than that. This, ladies and gentlemen, might be the point where Kay's whole dodging of accountability falls apart. So far, we've heard repeatedly from Kay about how he was backstabbed by Sam Pepper, how Sam Pepper caused everything when Sam Pepper sold his tokens. But given all the lies from Fraser Kay, I wasn't sure. Did Sam actually sell before Fraser? Well, I went back and checked their main wallets we know of. And what I found made me sick to my stomach. Here's a little spreadsheet I made with their main wallets along with their first sell of Save the Kids in the transaction ID. And for reference, these tokens were given to them at June 5th at 1026 p.m. UTC time. And if you take a look at this and I put their fastest sell in bold, you'll notice that it was not Sam Pepper who sold first. It was actually Fraser K. Fraser K sold 30 minutes before Sam Pepper. An entire 30 minutes before. This man who threw this guy under the bus completely and played innocent, in actuality, started selling first. Now again, is Sam Pepper a dirtbag? Yes. You only have to watch my other videos to know that I am not a fan of Sam Pepper. I do not like Sam Pepper. He had a huge role in this scam. But for Kay to play the victim, when all the evidence is against that narrative, I can't sit idly by and let him lie to people. Sam Pepper was not the first to run for the door. Sam Pepper just ended up selling a little faster in the end. Now, other things you should also probably know is that Kay is not past his days of trying to silence people. See, 
right before launching his new response video, Kay sent another cease and desist letter. Not to me, this time it was to Sam Pepper. Now I can't show you it on screen because unfortunately it was marked confidential, but what I can tell you is that part of the cease and desist letter was apparently because Sam Pepper had given me and some ordinary gamers, my co-investigator, who you should watch here, he'd given us information. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, if Kay can't stop me from talking, he'll try to stop Sam Pepper from talking. And I confronted Frazier about this, by the way, to give him a chance to deny it because we all know that we take Pepper with a grain of salt, but he didn't respond for comment. But it just seems like more and more action by Frazier to deal with this by silencing people rather than coming out and just being honest about his actual dealings in Save the Kids. Now at this point, we've already debunked nearly every point of Frazier's self-investigation and proven his response to be massively wrong at best and completely manipulative at worst. But there's another feature here I'd like to discuss. These giveaways that Fraser K addresses. See, he says it was there's only one mistake in all of the giveaways. So it's come to my attention that one giveaway out of all of them was missed, and this is a $500 giveaway to a single person. But this is not true. The wallets I'm about to show you not only won multiple giveaway tokens from Fraser K, but some of them are also getting paid BNB by K. Coincidence? Maybe. But when five wallets win two or more of your giveaways and multiple of them are getting paid from your main wallet, it starts looking pretty suspicious. Take for instance, that second wallet on screen here, OX49A4. It won three giveaways from K. It was also paid $5,000 from K's main wallet. And then, oops, what's this? It also bought into the Save the Kids presale. Probably a coincidence, I'm sure. But not only that, this wallet, which won all these giveaways, also got paid by, hilariously enough, two known Sam Pepper wallets. In fact, the first ever transaction on this wallet is from none other than SamPepper.eth, making it likely that this wallet, which won multiple of Fraser's giveaways, is either Sam Pepper or someone close to Kay and Sam. I asked Sam about this, he denied it being his wallet. But tell me again how all of these so-called giveaways were on the up and up. I mean, sure, some money was definitely given away to real people, but there's some seriously shady business too, which Kay has obviously not addressed. Why do the people he's picking to win also have a history of being paid by known Sam Pepper wallets and his wallet in the past. I thought they were random strangers. But now that we've talked about these giveaways, I have one last surprise for you guys, one last big reveal. So far, most of these videos have been focused on the perpetrators of the Save the Kids scam. But I'd like to shift gears and talk about the victims of Save the Kids, the fans. Previously, we didn't know who invested and why, but now that's changed because I just got access to the public pre-sale request list. And why that's important is because in order to get on it, you had to answer some questions, most notably why you wanted to buy Save the Kids and how long you planned to hold it. The purpose of me sharing this is to get you in the heads of some of the people who bought into Save the Kids token, many of whom who lost money. Because right away from the responses, it's pretty clear. Some of them just wanted to make money. Why do you want to buy Lambo, Lambo, I want to buy Lambo, Lamborghini, sir, Lamborghini, I want to buy Lambo so I can afford Lambo to buy Lambo to buy a Lambo. But others weren't in it for the money. They were just fans. Support the cause and FaZe Clan. Love FaZe Clan and what you guys are doing. FaZe Moon. Heard about this through Follow Frazier and my other faves from FaZe. First of all, I like the ambassador very much. I've been following FaZe K for a long time. And then interestingly, in the how long you plan to hold section, this person said, I plan to hold until phase K abandons this project. Just kidding. Well, turns out K wasn't kidding. These are just a few of the responses. There are almost a hundred responses like this that mention phase specifically. Others mention a specific phase member like K or Nikan. Others really just wanted to save the kids. Quote, why do you want to buy? Because I want to help participate for charity, help people with charity and earn some money as well. Because being on a charity coin and getting rich at the same time is just so satisfying. And what this shows is the real humans behind a scam 
like Save the Kids. They don't all go in for the same reasons. They're not just numbers on a chart. These were real people that this affected. Nobody seems to care about that. Everything is about blaming Sam Pepper and how Kay didn't do anything wrong. But the truth is, it wasn't all Sam Pepper's fault. Kay owned the biggest wallet. He started selling before Sam and he created this coin. Don't let him lie to you. Not about that or about Sam making hundreds of thousands of dollars from Save the Kids because the evidence just isn't there. These blockchain detectives that he hired are a joke. They mistook Boink Boink for Sam. They mistook an entire presale wallet list for a conspiracy about Sam Pepper owning everything. See, the truth is, all these influencers love shilling crypto when it's fun and making them money. But the second people get scammed and people start to think there might be some trouble involved, everybody disappears. Nobody knows how crypto works and it's impossible to get anyone to take any accountability. And I can't help but think it's ultimately gonna take law enforcement getting involved for anyone to actually stop this. But whether that happens tomorrow or 10 years from now, either way, you can count on me being here in the $10 million studio, losing sleep, tracking down these cases for you, drinking too much caffeine, because I won't stop until we do actually save the kids. All the promises you made, all the kids you said you'd save, but what a shame, what a shame, you're a fraud. Are you the same as who you say? No, you're